Okay, Jordan, if you can go to the, uh, the next slide, we'll get started. So hello, everybody, uh, and thank you for, uh, for joining us today. Uh, my name is Bruce Bianco. I'm with my colleague, uh, Gerard, on the other line here. Uh, we'll be taking you through a quick introduction uh, and a demo of uh, our new self-service temperature kiosk. Gerard, can you, uh, next slide. So uh, just really quickly, for those who aren't as familiar with Barcodes Group, Barcodes uh, Inc. Um, is North America's leading provider of barcode, uh, mobile access, uh, computing, RFID, um, and identification solutions. Um, today, we won't be talking about any of those. Um, as I suggested, we're, we're talking about a new solution that, we, uh, that we're excited to come out with. Um, it's a, a temperature kiosk. Gerard? So, so why uh, are temperature kiosks, temperature services, why are, why are they important in today's conversation? Um, I think quite simply, uh, many of us um, and the businesses and the organizations um, that we represent are anxious to get back to, uh, get back to work um, and to, to get back to some level of normalcy. Um, and what we're seeing is that in order to do that um, and to create uh, safe work environments and healthy work environments that respect some of the guidelines uh, that we're seeing from state and federal authorities that uh, screening of some sort um, is going to be vitally important to a back to work program. Gerard, next. So there, there are a number of solutions out there um, specific to, uh, to temperature screening. They're going to help us achieve some of these goals. Um, three that we've seen most in our conversation um, are services. So uh, we see a lot, especially now as new technologies are coming to market. Uh, screening services seem to be um, something that people are looking at. The, the challenge with these are um, you have to hire the, the organization or service company. Um, they're fairly expensive. Uh, on an ongoing monthly basis, and they do involve hu human interaction. So they, there, there is the aspect of potentially uh, putting people at risk. Um, there are group um, temperature uh, sensing devices um, that can actually take large amounts of people at a single point. Um, they are quite expensive um, to purchase. Um, they're quite um, involved in maintaining and setting up, uh, but they are out there. But, but again, those, those devices probably range in the neighborhood of 20 to you know, 20, $30,000 and up. Um, the other thing that we see people doing um, with regards to uh, self-service kiosks is just asking surveys and questions. So people coming into the buildings uh, we'll go through a series of questions and surveys. The problem with that obviously is that it's, it's based on an honor system um, and, it's, and it's less reliable. But those are some of the things that we're seeing out in the marketplace today. Um, next slide, Gerard. So this is our solution. Um, it's a freestanding uh, pedestal, um, hands-free, um, it's touchless, um, and it includes voice prompts. So there's absolutely zero human interaction. It's completely self-service. Um, its temperature uh, detection is quite impressive. It's approximately one second as people are walking through uh, an entrance or a gated area or a lobby uh, for them to detect, for the device to detect somebody um, and then for, for the temperature screening process to take place. Also uh, impressive is its accuracy. Um, if you look at other devices or other uh, options in the, available on the market, um, this device 0.9 uh, degrees Fahrenheit in either direction um, as far as accuracy. Um, it has the ability to have audible alarms and LED alarms to alert um, others in the lobby or in the entrance space, a guard, a receptionist, uh, that there may be a problem. Um, and those, those alarms can be turned on or off. Um, depending on the policy of the, of the organization. Uh, it's got some other neat features. Um, facial recognition, if you do want to enroll your employees, um, so to, to ensure that not only is it taking temperature of people, but it's the only people that are authorized to be at the specific gate facility entrance area uh, are actually going through the process. 
Um, and another neat feature is it can actually support uh, face, mask de face mask detection. So if you have, excuse me, a policy uh, that not only that their temperature needs to be in a certain range, but they need to be wearing a face mask, then this device will do that. Um, it has something called stranger mode. So if, and, and many organizations I, I think that we've talked to are, are, are focusing on this. Uh, while the facial recognition is a nice feature, I think most people, you know, as we talk about going back to work, the main focus is I want to know the people that are coming into my building if their temperature is within range. Um, so stranger mode, if you turn this on, it, it won't force you um, to have employees enrolled in the system. If you walk up, if it knows somebody as an employee that's supposed to be here, then it will certainly show that person's face. But if, if stranger mode is turned on and you have a guest walk up, it will equally tell, take their temperature as well, and it will capture their picture if you want, um, but you don't actually have to be pre-enrolled in the system. Um, it supports uh, LAN and Wi-Fi connectivity for future services that we are, are coming up with in the, in the following months. Um, the device is FCC certified um, and CE certified, and probably one of the nicest features compared to some of the other services and options that I talked about on the last slide is that it's extremely easy uh, to set up out of the out of the packaging from the time you get it you're probably looking at about you know less than five minutes for it to be up and running uh, and you you'd be able to take temperatures so that gives you a little bit of a a background on why we're doing it um, the other options that are out here um, and then the solution that we're presenting today i think a lot of people want to see the device so we're going to ask gerard as we can move to the next slide so gerard just to give you a, a little uh disclaimer he is the proud uh, new grandfather of a baby boy and so he flew out to Washington State uh, to be with his family so you, we're going to see if we can bear with Gerard he's in a hotel room uh, across the country from where he's normally at but he's going to give us a demonstration uh, of the device so Gerard I'll hand it over to you. Thank you Bruce. Good morning folks. So here we are set up with the device as Bruce uh, described it and you've got a wide angle shot from the side that way it shows you the view of me interacting with the device. And on the left hand side, you will see the actual screen display so you can follow along. There might be a little bit of a lag, but I'll try to talk a little bit slowly, slowly so that um, there's a more synchronized uh, experience for you all. What I propose is that I'll walk up to the unit a couple of times I've enabled the mask feature, so it's going to recognize that I do not have a mask on, and it's going to ask me to put the mask on. So I'll just be quiet for the next couple of times as I walk up and back from the unit. Please get clothes for taking temperature. Please get clothes for taking temperature. Normal temperature. Please wear a mask. Normal temperature. Please get clothes for taking temperature. Normal temperature. Please wear a mask. So the algorithm that has been cleverly programmed to detect that the face of the person presenting themselves is not wearing a mask is fully working. And I will don a quick mask here so that I'm compliant. And I'll still wear my glasses. I'm, I'm almost wearing glasses. Normal temperature. Normal temperature. Normal temperature. Normal temperature. Please get clothes for taking temperature. Normal temperature. I, think I might have a little bit of reflection from the. There it is. Normal temperature. So there it caught Gerard turning off. Pre rolled myself. Normal temperature. Please get close for taking temperature. Please get close for taking temperature. Normal temperature. Normal temperature. So it's. Normal temperature. There it is. It recognized that Jerfred is ready to uh, come in the office. He's got a normal temperature. He's wearing the mask. So I'll give him a bit. And I'll, I'll drop my mask and you'll see it'll start asking me to put the mask on. Normal temperature. Please wear a mask. 
So it, it works very well to detect whether the person is compliant with the mask feature. I'm going to quickly turn that mask feature off. And I just need to switch my keyboard over to the device. The great thing about this application is it comes with a very rich set of settings that uh, the operator can manipulate and change around. So I'm going to turn off the mass detection and put it back into production mode. And you can see I don't have to reboot the system, it just the, the settings pick up right away. So I've turned off the mass detection. Please get close for taking temperature. And it recognizes me. Normal temperature. And it's giving me a Please get close for taking temperature. So it's it's letting Fred come in. Normal temperature. Even if Fred had a mask on. Please get close for taking temperature. Normal temperature. Normal temperature. Normal temperature. Okay. Please get close. Got a that's shining from the top here that is probably impacting by there it is. Normal temperature. So there's Fred. He's getting into the building today. Now, if I simulate a hot temperature with a hot mug of water, you'll see it will screen and alert that I've, I'm out of range. So I'm protecting myself. Please for taking temperature. Please get close for taking temperature. Please get close for taking temperature. So, no entry. Abnormal temperature. Abnormal temperature. Please get close for taking temperature. Abnormal temperature. So it's flagging that temperature. the candidate that is presented Please in front of the unit taking temperature. has a high elevated temperature that's above the taking threshold. Please get close for taking temperature. And you can see that the sensors are very uh, uh, accurate and very uh, dialed in for about six foot range. So as I'm approaching the unit within six feet away and about a 60 degree angle field of view, it's starting to detect that somebody is walking up to the unit ready to be screened. And now I'm standing well out of the range. You can barely see me off to the side here on the uh, camera shot. So this is the uh, Idle mode, you've got a little screensaver with some gears fl floating around. Um, you can change this and put a company logo, but uh, right now I've got it just set with a default. And as soon as I come into view here, the sensor starts to pick up that I'm here. Please get close for taking temperature. Please get close for taking temperature. Normal temperature. Abnormal temperature. And, uh, it is very quick, very accurate to detect that I'm out of range. I'll put my hot mug away. And um, the next thing that we wanted to show you is the audio alarm. So folks, we're gonna make one more change to the settings and we'll give you a demonstration of the audio alarm. Now, while Gerard's doing that, I, I will say that um, it's quite loud, the audible, audible alarm. So we're seeing most organizations um, uh, questioning whether they want to, you know, they want to be sensitive to alienating um, their guest or employee. So I think most people are, are turning this off, but we want to show you that it is, in case you have a use case where it's required, you can see this. Please get close for taking temperature. Please get That's quite obvious. Please um, get close for taking temperature. Anybody within the earshot in the lobby would have heard that noise. Um, 
it is a feature, as Bruce said, that can be turned off. And it sounds like most of our customers are saying that they might elect to not use this audible feature. And, George, uh, can you put your uh, can you put your hand up to it just so people can get an idea of the size of the device? Yes. Let me just turn this guy off here. So the device itself is uh, an eight inch tablet. So you've got eight inch edge to edge on the uh, display itself. Overall, it's about 12 inches tall, very well constructed. Um, I I'm gonna say this is close to one of those Apple-esque finishes of form, fit and function because it's so polished and well done. The glass and the housing uh, don't have any kind of seams on it. The, the construction is very solid and robust, um, very easy. Like Bruce said, that's really plug and play. Out of the box within a few minutes, once you've put it, you've plugged it into your local 120 volts AC outlet, the unit auto boots up and it remembers the settings. So what I do, and you see I'm traveling here in a hotel room, it remembers the settings from the last time. You don't have to go and reconfigure it. So very solid, very stable device. Okay, are you gonna go back to the, uh, go back to the slides? Yes. Thank you, Gerard. Um, I forgot to mention, and I think some people have already found it, but uh, at, at the end of this, uh, we've got a couple of slides left here to talk talking points. Um, we are gonna have a question and answer period, and I think we'll stay as long as necessary. We allocated, 10 or 15 minutes, but I'm seeing that um, there are a ton of questions coming in, which is great. Um, so I think we'll make our, ourselves available as long as people want to stay on. Normal temperature. But at the bottom, yeah, at the bottom of your Zoom screen, you should see there's two. Choose whichever one works best for you. There's a Q&A and there's also a chat. There you go, Bruce. Awesome, thank you so much. So uh, just a couple to finish off here. So some of the benefits that we're, that we're highlighting, um, I think it's, it's, an, it's gonna be an important part of any um, back to work uh, program to ensure the success of a back to work program or health and safety uh, program. Um, it helps with uh, adherence to federal and state health recommendations. It's certainly talked a lot about um, in the news as part of a, an integrated program. Again, it's completely touchless as, as Gerard talked about. And, and has shown us. So there's absolutely zero human interaction, no touching in the screen. Um, and I think um, as, as, as part of it, it, it shows the organization's uh, support uh, and commitment to a healthy and safe work environment, which is gonna be on employees' minds and guests' minds as we start looking at re returning back to uh, our, our normal work days. Next slide, Jordan. Yep. So just to recap a bit of its uh, the capabilities, again, the first form factor that's coming out is a pedestal with a plug. There will be additional form factors coming, which we can address in a question answer period. Um, the main capability, I mean, the, the focus for this device is to take people's temperature and give organizations and people a reassurance that health and, and healthy people are coming into the, into the organization or the, or the, the facility. Um, it does support face, facial recognition if you want to use that. Um, we showed you the mass detection, which is interesting feature to help a lot of organizations we're talking to are going to have some type of policy that um, uh, they're looking at wearing masks or, or adhering to masks. Um, again, the alarm thresholds, there's a number of different alarms, uh, LED and audible, um, and, and there's various calibrations uh, for ambient temperature that, uh, that are supported as well. Again, there's Wi-Fi and LAN capabilities for future services that we're that we're planning to come out with. Um, the two main modes, again, are stranger mode. It will, it will take the temperature of anybody and report on, on that person um, or recognition mode, which you'll have to be enrolled into the system um, uh, prior to walking up to the device for it to work. Otherwise, it will deny you. Um, 
The um, list price for the device is $32.50 for the, the pedestal that's, uh, that we're showing here. Um, and as far as optional services and support, um, we're recommending that you speak with your, um, your authorized partner about the various services, uh, project management capabilities, uh, post sales, technical support and so forth um, that they're offering for, these, uh, for this device. As far as where you can get the device, if you can go to the next slide, Gerard. There's a number of storefronts, uh, store, sorry, storefronts, uh, storefronts, sorry, um, and brands that fall under the Barco Group and authorized partners um, that you see here. I believe marketing is going to make uh, this presentation available, um, but any one of the ones um, that you're familiar with, you probably were invited from one of the brands that you're used to doing business with. Certainly, reach out to them. The product is available now. Um, reach out to them for any further questions if you want further demos or in more in-depth. Uh, demos and uh, and we'll be glad to help you. So it, it, the, the goal of this was was an introduction at a high level. Um, we certainly would love to entertain one-on-one um, uh, -on -one conversations afterwards but I think at this point um, we're, we've got a number of questions coming up that um, if everybody's okay we'll move into a, a question and answer period. Yeah thanks Bruce. Um, yes we definitely have a lot of questions and maybe Gerard if you could leave the previous slide up on the screen so people that step, like to take that information down have a little bit more a chance to do so I appreciate that. One question and, and I'm trying to combine uh, some questions from different uh, attendees but so how does the unit accommodate for varying ambient temperatures? So people coming in from the cold or the building is very hot in the summer. How does the unit address this? So there are there, there are adjustments that you can make if those if those temperatures are consistent. If somebody's coming in for from a run, for instance, and 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 they're maybe their temperature is higher than it, it normally would be. This device is a screening device. So it would actually say that their temperature was higher. They go off to maybe a secondary triage. Person says, hey, listen, you seem to have a temperature. They said, no, I went for a run. Um, and then, you know, the, the policy that we're, I mean, I'm, I'm talking to some of the use cases that we're talking with people about. That's the person to sit and then they would retest them. Um, as far as um, placement, Gerard can speak to it, but you know, you, you don't necessarily want to put this thing in direct sunlight, but there are, there are adjustments within. So if your room is traditionally cold, um, that you can make adjustments there's on the threshold. Yeah, so um, exactly as Bruce said, the device has a field that you can put in a compensation value. Um, the algorithm is working in Celsius or centigrade and your staff would assess after a couple of days of the unit working, it seems to be reading a little hotter or colder than we would like to based on those readings you saw, 97, 98 degrees. So you can adjust if it's a, a lobby that does not have air conditioning and it's reading a little warm, you can put that lower. Or if it's a lobby with a lot of air conditioning, you can put a plus uh, factor in there to bump up the temperature. And it, it's an empirically derived, because as we said, this is not a medical device, so your IT and your HR department can monitor from a day to day to see how it's drifting or, or if it's not drifting and you can just let it go. It, it will be very stable. Then um, a question I about is, you know, do you keep a log of all the recorded temperatures? Well, where is this data going that you, um, you record uh, when people's temperatures are taken? So at this point right now, um, the, it, yes, so yes, it does. Um, and it's being recorded on, on the device. And then from an alert standpoint, the, if the alarm is a little loud for, for people, um, what other ways can there be to alert um, other people in the building that, that so much temperature is too high? Like, you know, an email yeah. was, was being requested. So at, at this at this time, the two options are there's an LED, so a visual a display or the audible display. In the near future, we'll be launching a backend cloud service that will allow you to uh, notify someone or a group of people about a temperature that's out of range and it will, it will email them or send them um, 
the time, uh, the location of where that person came in, what kiosk, because you may have various locations in your building or premises, um, a picture of the person uh, and the temperature. And then um, question is the, about the height. So if people use this, let's say in a school setting where faculty is, is a lot taller than students, um, how, how does it work with the height of a unit? So um, you, can, you can adjust, well, you know what, I'll let Gerard, I'll let Gerard uh, tackle this one. Sure, so um, Edwin, this unit has about a 30 degree tilt range from facing up as we were showing it in our demo or facing it downward. And you don't have to be right on it. So within the ranges of the uh, tilting and the cone, the wide cone of uh, view, this device will capture shorter folks as well as tall folks um, with quite uh, accuracy and speed. So is the unit affected by sunlight or glare? So environmental conditions, air conditioning, heating, registers, uh, any, any effect in your testing, Jura? Yes, um, you, it, it, it's very forgiving, but as you saw, I do have an overhead light that seems to be, um, uh, what do you call that, uh, reflecting off of my glasses. And you would want to put this in a position where you don't have direct sunlight for sure. So you would not f face this out to a large lobby glass uh, window and you would wanna make sure that you don't have any large halogen lights in the background that are interfering with it. But um, for the many different places that we've set this device up and used, it has not had any impact from uh, ambient lighting from the room. Great. Um, maybe we'll, we'll take another one here. Can you clean and disinfect the device easily? Is it waterproof? So um, it is not, IP rated, so to speak. So we did not go and take out an IP56 or IP um, waterproof rating on it, but it is very tightly constructed. So normal cleaning that you would use for uh, computer monitors and your laptops with uh, disinfectant cloth will not impact the uh, devices in this unit. It has a fan, I, I wanted to mention also, it has a built-in fan. So if the ambient temperature of the space gets elevated, the fan will kick on and keep the electronics cool. And then uh, maybe, maybe this is the last one, the, a lot of questions coming in related to integration with, with other um, you know, interfaces, such as an access control system. Um, how, how would you respond to that when someone is interested in this unit? Sorry, say, say that one again, Edwin. I, I missed that. I apologize. Well, it's the can you can you integrate it with a card reader? Um, you know, can you give access based on based on this? Uh, you know, the temperature reading. Uh, it, is there any it, integration? It, it, it has limited integration capabilities at this moment. Um, it does have an integrated reader in it. It supports MyFair. Uh, most people with in North America, or some people use MyFair as a technology. It's quite prevalent overseas. Uh, most people in this part of the world are using um, technologies by HID Technology uh, or HID Global. Um, so I, I would say that, yes, it does have some features in there that would allow it to, but at this point, it's, it's, it's quite limited. We will be addressing that. I think that covers the kind of like the, the broad range of questions that come in um, and maybe we can leave it at this and uh, address, you know, other questions, by, you know, one-on-one -on -one by you know, having people reach out maybe to these phone numbers on the screen or maybe to the account manager that they're familiar with and uh, we'll certainly follow up on all this. Can we, Edwin, can we, for the questions that are remaining, I see there's a lot of them, um, can we um, get a, we'll, we'll have a list of the people that ask the questions, we can respond to them? Definitely. Okay, perfect. And that, then that's what we'll do for the people that may have a question in that, that we weren't able to address in the, in the timeline we had, um, we'll certainly reach out to you and, and, and address any questions you have. So 
I, I think this is if if Edwin's give me the the nod um, or the cane, then this is going to be the end of the presentation. Again, really thank you for for taking the time. We're excited about this product. Um, uh, it, it's very relevant, um, you know, in in today's um, uh, time. Um, so again, thank you so much for uh, for joining us. Thank you, folks.